back. Um, next step is making these holes clean and pretty and the right size for the new bushings that I just made. Uh, the way we're going to do this without any machine tools, we're going to do this all by hand. We've got Instamorph. Um, and I've got a post up on uh, Facebook and on the Woodwind Fixer page. There is a photo album called No Mill, No Problem. And that will explain this in maybe greater detail. It depends on how much I ramble here. But the concept is I'm going to form the Instamorph around a pilot and hold that pilot in place square until uh, it hardens. Then I will use the hole that that pilot was in to guide a cutter of the same size. And that will clean out that those really messy holes um, and give us a nice foundation for those guys to sit in there. Typically, I would have, and you would, you'll see this if you check out the photo album on Facebook, I would make a pilot that had a shoulder that sat um, right on, that's a bad pointer, a shoulder that sits on the shoulder. And then a longer piece, typically there would be threads in here. And there would be a longer piece that would fit right down in there. Uh, so it had a better chance of uh, being true and sitting there on its own while the Instamorph hardened up. But these holes are so messed up, um, making a pilot like that would, I think, just be an exercise in frustration. So I'm going to freehand this one. Uh, this is a 3 16th bit, 3 16th end bell. The 3 16th is 0.1875. I've got these at 0 0.180. So I've got extra room if I need to, you know, change the angle or anything. I've got a little bit of room to move stuff around uh, between the, the extra space and the gooiness of epoxy and all that good stuff. So since my I ran the battery out on my GoPro, I'm going to pause here and magically come back on the next step. So while I am waiting for this to harden up, a couple of things to think about. Um, you have to use features on the instrument as registration points so when this is hard it can be taken off and just locked back into place um because you have to check and make sure that things are lined up properly and you can't do that with this big white glob of plastic right in your in the way of your field of vision so uh here i have the tone hole I've got some squished into the tone hole, and I've got the other post hole, such as it is, uh, just as kind of a secondary. You don't want to go too crazy because, remember, this is a curved surface. If you lock into too many points, you're never going to get the thing off. Um, so a couple of registration points is good, but don't go nuts. Don't go wrapping it around the head of a post or anything like that. You can go up to a post and use that as like a pin to register off of, but uh, don't go wrapping around it. Um, and when this is hardened up, I can use this bit. I can just flip it around and use that by hand. I wouldn't do this under power um, to clean out that hole, or I can use the end mill. Uh, it all depends on how satisfied I am with the fit in the hole here. Um, the advantage of making a pilot, you make the pilot fairly short, 
you stick the pilot in place and you squish the instamorph over the top of it so it pokes out the other side and that gives you a really good fit um, this one I wrapped it around I am not sure how that's going to work We're, we have a few minutes to wait and see how tight that's going to be it might be a little too too loosey-goosey to make an accurate hole and I don't want that so the instamorph is pretty much cured. I'm going to see if I can pop this off with one hand and show you what we're dealing with. So you can see there we've got the tone hole and the other post hole provide registration points. So now I can put this back on and it's lined up exactly where it was before. And now I can run my cutter in that pilot very carefully. And bore out that um, hole for the post. So you can see that it's coming along. And the reason we want our pilot piece here to be able to be removed is because we need to check our depth. And if I pop that in there, we still have a little ways to go. And I don't I want the brass to be flush or slightly below uh, the surface of the wood. Out there. That looked worse than it was. So I'm close but still have a little ways to go. And I still have to do the countersink on that uh, um, top of that bushing. All right, that's about where I want it. That'll blow the surface. And earlier I mentioned how I'd have room to work with the alignment. I have a lot of room to wiggle that around, the alignment. Um, the way I'm going to align things is when I get the other one in place, um, I'm going to mount the key with a pad of the right thickness and hold that closed, and that is going to set the alignment. I might need a couple of clips or clamps or you know duct tape or whatever to hold things in place while the epoxy is setting, but that's the best way to do it when you're don't have the original jigs for the instrument from 170 years ago or whatever. Uh, so now to remelt the instamorph and make the, the guide for the other hole. So here's the second one curing up. This one is more challenging because it was more damaged. It was, it was more of a mess. Um, so this one, I might have to do some creative filling around it with super glue and wood dust, but we will see uh, how it turns out. Uh, and then we'll see how things align. And I'll dig through my drawer and see if my epoxy's reached its shelf life and I have to run out to get more epoxy. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the new post holes board. Uh, I have the hinge rod in there for alignment purposes. Uh, looks okay. Uh, nothing is secured yet. They, these are still loose. I could, if the angle was right, I could pull those right out. Um, but next, before I do anything else with the posts, I'm going to repair the cracks. Um, look at the extent I have to work on that tone hole. Extract that broken screw and fill the hole um, and I wanted to at least uh, get a start on those the crack and filling those old holes before I glue things in place um, just uh, so I'm not having to sand and file in between the posts that's a bit of a pain um, uh, I'm at least going to uh, carve out this crack for filling um, 
and then uh, I'll probably fill this crack, and there's a little one here too, um, after I epoxy the bushings in place, because uh, the epoxy will help hold that crack together too. Um, so that's next. Almost ready to epoxy these brass bushings in place. Uh, I got everything dry fit and lined up and difficulty that I ran into is the springs on these older keys are riveted in place and when they're loose that's fine but when they're tight leave them alone. This one's tight so I can't really spin it out of the way uh, to get the tension out of the way. So that would have made it really awkward to hold everything in place while the epoxy cured. So instead I made a piece, just a spacer, same size as the hinge on this, that I can use to keep these at the correct spacing uh, while the epoxy is curing without any you know, resistance from the spring on the key, you know, trying to pop them apart just from its own leverage. So I'm going to uh, glue these up and we'll see how it looks like when I'm done. Oh, uh, since these bushings have a through hole when I made them, I took the post out and heated it up, stuck it in some paraffin. So when I screwed it back in, um, that little face of the post that you can see through the bottom is coated in paraffin so the epoxy won't stick to it, hopefully, and the posts will be able to come out. Um, but uh, that's about it. Wish me luck. Be back. Here are the two posts glued up and set for curing. Um, don't be bothered by the spacer piece not looking quite right. I made a very oversized hole through the middle because I didn't want any features on the hinge rod to uh, affect um, the squareness of the post faces. So hopefully that will do the job and hopefully I didn't glue the posts to the bushings. I had a lot of uh, squeeze out, so we will see in about five minutes. Okay, the glue is all cured enough, um, so I can unscrew the post, and there's a brass bushing, and it's oriented so I can confidently screw the post in and have it stop where it needs to be to be lined up. Or I can cross thread it and have it stop early, whatever I want to do. Um, obviously we've got some gap here from the previous repairer's misadventures. Uh, I'll try to fill that in a little bit, maybe. I might just leave it alone. Um, and I've got the crack to finish filling in here, but you know, I had had the spacer. Let's see how it worked. That looks pretty good to me. Might have to do a little swedge, but I think that's pretty darn close. I don't feel any wiggle that way, at least with one hand. Um, so I'm satisfied with how that turned out. <laughs> 